In the quiet town of Hawthorne Springs, nestled among the rolling hills and bordered by dense woods, life was simple, predictable. The streets lined with charming old houses held stories from generations, and each person seemed to know each other's history by heart. The sheriff of this small town, a man named Roy Carter, was well respected. Known for his no-nonsense demeanor and strict sense of duty, Roy had served as the town's law enforcement for nearly 20 years. His presence offered comfort to the townsfolk, who over time had come to trust him like family. Roy's wife, Laura, was equally well-known in town, but for different reasons. Strikingly beautiful, with an elegance that set her apart, Laura was often seen at community gatherings, charity events, and church services, radiating charm and grace. Her relationship with Roy was, by all appearances, rock solid. To the outside world, they seemed like the perfect couple. But as many in the town would later recall, there were subtle signs of tension beneath the surface. Laura had grown restless over the years. Life in a small town hadn't exactly been what she dreamed of. She had always yearned for excitement, for adventure, and perhaps even a sense of danger that the routine stability of Roy's life couldn't offer. Roy's long hours, dedication to his job, and emotionally distant nature only served to increase her dissatisfaction. She felt trapped in a life that didn't belong to her as though she was a supporting character in someone else's story. It was during one of these lonely stretches, where Roy was spending long nights on the job, that she crossed paths with Deputy Mark Green. Mark was a relatively new addition to the Sheriff's Department, having come from a neighboring town. Tall, rugged, and confident, Mark brought a different energy to the otherwise quiet office. He had a reputation as something of a ladies' man, with a charismatic charm and a glint of mischief in his eyes. Laura noticed him immediately, and he seemed equally intrigued by her. Their encounter started innocently enough, a few smiles exchanged in passing, small talk at town events, and eventually, longer conversations when Roy was nowhere to be found. Mark was attentive in a way Roy hadn't been for years. He listened to her, made her laugh, and made her feel like the center of his world, if only for brief moments. One evening, after a particularly chilly town meeting, Laura and Mark found themselves alone in the parking lot. Their conversation lingered as they stood close, and the tension between them was undeniable. The air felt thick with the thrill of something forbidden. When he reached out and gently brushed a strand of hair from her face, Laura didn't pull away. She leaned in, and their lips met in a kiss that felt electric, reigniting something in her that she hadn't felt in years. That kiss marked the beginning of their affair, a secret that would soon grow too large to contain. Their meetings became more frequent, and the thrill of sneaking around made Laura feel alive. The two would rendezvous in hidden places, at Mark's secluded cabin, or in the woods beyond the town's edge. Their affair was passionate and reckless, and Laura felt liberated. But as their relationship deepened, so did the stakes. As Mark's jealousy spiraled out of control, he became increasingly demanding, wanting Laura all to himself, pressing her to leave Roy and start a new life with him. But Laura was hesitant. The passion she'd once felt was now mixed with fear, and Mark's possessiveness only made her feel trapped in a different way. She didn't want to lose the stability Roy provided, but she also couldn't deny the thrill she'd experienced with Mark. She felt torn between the two men, each representing a different side of her own conflicted desires. Meanwhile, Jake kept a close eye on Mark, sensing the deputy's unraveling. Jake's confrontations with Mark grew tense, barely concealed threats simmering beneath polite words and forced smiles. Jake made it clear that he wouldn't let Mark hurt Roy or Laura if he could help it. He knew that his longtime friend was suffering quietly, and he felt it was his duty to help restore Roy's pride and stability. As Jake became more involved, Laura found herself unable to escape the tangled web she had woven. The three men were now interlocked in a dangerous rivalry, each driven by conflicting loyalties, jealousy, and long-buried resentments. 
Then came the night that would change everything. It was a humid evening in August, the kind that made the air feel thick and stifling. Roy was scheduled to work the late shift, and Laura, feeling restless and trapped at home, decided to slip out to meet Mark. She drove to his cabin on the edge of town, hoping for a brief escape from the suffocating atmosphere at home. But when she arrived, she was startled to find Jake's truck parked outside. Her heart raced as she approached the cabin, a sense of dread growing with each step. Inside, Jake and Mark were locked in a heated argument. The two men's voices rose and fell, each accusing the other of betrayal, of putting Laura in danger, of disrespecting Roy. Laura, hidden outside, listened to the bitter exchange, frozen with fear and unable to move. She had no idea how far this would go, but she sensed that something terrible was about to happen. Suddenly, she heard a gunshot, piercing the silence and sending her heart racing. She stumbled back, covering her mouth to stifle a scream as her mind raced. She couldn't leave, she had to know what had happened. Summoning her courage, she crept up to the window and peered inside. The sight that greeted her was one of horror Jake lay on the floor, motionless, with blood pooling around him, while Mark stood over him, breathing heavily, his gun still in his hand. The look in Mark's eyes was one of fury and desperation, a man who had gone too far and now had no way back. Laura gasped, and Mark's head snapped toward the window. Their eyes met, and in that moment Laura knew that everything had changed. Mark opened the door and pulled her inside, his voice a harsh whisper as he explained, or rather justified, what had happened. He claimed it had been self-defense, that Jake had attacked him, but Laura wasn't sure if she could believe him. The mark she saw now was a stranger, a man driven to the edge by jealousy and fear, and she felt a cold chill run down her spine. Mark convinced her to help him cover up the scene, insisting that it was the only way to protect them both. In a daze, Laura found herself agreeing, though her mind screamed at her to run. They worked quickly, dragging Jake's body into the woods and burying him in a shallow grave. As they stood over the freshly turned earth, Laura felt a deep, consuming sense of dread settle over her. She knew she had crossed a line, one that there was no coming back from. In the days that followed, Jake's disappearance sent shockwaves through the town. Roy was devastated, blaming himself for not noticing his friend's distress. He threw himself into the search, determined to find Jake and bring him home, not realizing that the answers were far closer than he knew. Laura watched him, guilt gnawing at her, yet she felt trapped, bound by her complicity in the crime. Mark, meanwhile, grew increasingly paranoid, convinced that someone would discover the truth. He became erratic, more controlling than ever, insisting that Laura cut all ties with Roy and leave town with him. But Laura was done. She couldn't bear the weight of what they had done, the lies piling up one after another, suffocating her. She told Mark that she needed time, that she couldn't just abandon her life and run away with him. Furious, Mark warned her that she was in too deep, that she couldn't simply walk away. His threats were thinly veiled, and for the first time Laura felt genuine fear for her own safety. She knew she had to find a way out, but she was terrified of what Mark might do if she tried to leave. Desperate, Laura turned to the only person she thought might help her Roy. She approached him one evening, her hands shaking as she told him that there were things he didn't know, secrets that could explain everything. Roy listened, his expression unreadable, as she revealed the truth about her affair with Mark, about Jake's death, and about the lengths Mark had gone to keep it all hidden. She left out her own role in the cover-up, painting herself as a victim, hoping that Roy's sense of duty and justice would drive him to act. Roy was silent for a long time after she finished, his face a mask of shock and betrayal. But beneath his stoic exterior, something inside him had snapped. He realized that the woman he had loved, the woman he had trusted, had not only betrayed him but had also torn apart everything he held dear. His best friend was dead, and his wife had been lying to him all along. He told Laura to go home and wait, that he would take care of it. 
Later that night, Roy confronted Mark in his cabin. The two men faced each other in tense silence, each knowing that the other had nothing left to lose. Mark tried to justify himself, to claim that everything he had done was out of love for Laura, but Roy wasn't interested in hearing excuses. He knew he had to put an end to the cycle of betrayal, violence, and lies that had torn his life apart. The confrontation escalated quickly, with both men fighting for their lives. It was a brutal, desperate struggle, each one trying to gain the upper hand, to survive. In the end, Roy emerged victorious, leaving Mark's lifeless body lying in the cabin. He walked away, bloodied and exhausted, but with a grim sense of closure. He knew that he would have to answer for what he had done, but he felt a strange peace, knowing that he had put an end to the darkness that had consumed his life. Roy returned home to find Laura waiting, her face pale and drawn. She asked him what had happened, but he didn't answer. He simply looked at her, the woman who had once been his everything, and walked past her, leaving her alone in the empty house. Laura was left to face the consequences of her actions, the weight of her choices pressing down on her, realizing that in her quest for excitement and freedom, she had destroyed everything she had ever known. After Roy's departure, Laura tried to pick up the pieces of her life, but the weight of isolation was crushing. Every corner of the house was filled with memories of her life with Roy, of stolen moments with Mark, and of the tangled mess she had left in her wake. She had wanted to be seen, to feel alive, and in the end she had lost everything. The people of Hawthorne Springs, though polite, kept their distance. Old friends avoided her, and people crossed the street rather than meet her gaze. Her beauty, once captivating, was now a reminder of the scandal that had rocked the town, she became the town's cautionary tale, a symbol of the dangers of forbidden desires. She tried to leave the house as little as possible, but eventually the loneliness became too much to bear. She took a job at a small diner on the outskirts of town, where most of the regulars didn't know her past, or, if they did, didn't care to ask. The work was mundane, but it gave her a purpose and allowed her to escape her own thoughts even if only for a few hours each day. One evening, as she wiped down tables after closing, a stranger came in. He was passing through, just another face among the many who stopped by on their way to somewhere else. They struck up a conversation, and for the first time in years, Laura felt a spark of connection. She shared nothing of her past, and he didn't pry. For a brief moment, she felt like a different person, someone unburdened by mistakes and regrets. Over time, they began to see each other regularly, meeting quietly outside of town where no one knew them. Laura found herself opening up in ways she hadn't expected. She didn't reveal the full extent of her story, but she spoke about loneliness, regret, and the weight of choices that couldn't be undone. He listened, offering her the kind of comfort she had once sought with Mark. But this time, it was different. There was no thrill of secrecy, no forbidden excitement, only a quiet understanding between two broken people. One day, as they walked along the edge of the woods, he asked her a question that stopped her in her tracks. If you could go back, would you change it all? Laura paused, her heart heavy with the weight of the past. She thought about the choices she had made, the pain she had caused, and the lives that had been lost. Finally, she answered, I don't know if I'd change everything, but I'd give anything to undo the hurt I caused. Her words hung in the air, a confession to the silent trees around them, as though she were speaking to the ghosts of the people she had loved and lost. They continued walking in silence, and for the first time, Laura felt a sense of peace not because her past had been forgiven, but because she had finally allowed herself to face it. Years went by, and Laura remained in Hawthorne Springs, never fully forgiven, but no longer shunned. People moved on, new families moved into town, and the old scandal faded into the background. Laura grew older, her once striking beauty softened by time and sorrow. She became a fixture of the town, a quiet, solitary figure with a past that few remembered and even fewer cared to ask about. 
In her later years, she found a quiet contentment in her solitude, tending a small garden behind her house and volunteering at the local church, helping those who had fallen on hard times. She lived a life of simplicity, her days marked by routine and quiet reflection, as though each small act of kindness was a way of atoning for her past. One cold winter morning, Laura passed away peacefully in her sleep. The townspeople who remembered her story gathered to pay their respects, each reflecting on the scandal that had once consumed the town but now felt like a distant memory. They spoke in hushed tones, remembering not only the tragedy of her choices but also the quiet, redemptive life she had tried to live afterward. In the end, Laura was buried in a small cemetery on the edge of town, close to the woods where so much of her life had unraveled. Her grave was simple, marked by a modest stone with her name and dates, nothing more. Yet for those who had known her, her life served as a reminder of the cost of passion, the weight of choices, and the possibility of redemption, even in the smallest of ways. As the years passed, her grave became overgrown, a quiet place where the town's past lay buried alongside her secrets. The townsfolk rarely spoke of her anymore, but on occasion, someone passing by would pause at her grave, leaving a single wildflower, a silent tribute to a life marked by both mistakes and the slow, quiet search for forgiveness. And in that silence, Laura's story faded back into the hills and woods of Hawthorne Springs, becoming part of the town's quiet, unspoken history. In the aftermath, the town was left reeling. News spread slowly at first, but soon everyone knew about Jake's disappearance, Mark's death, and the twisted love triangle that had shattered their seemingly perfect sheriff's life. Roy turned himself in, confessing to his role in Mark's death. The court recognized the years of service he had given to the community and the extraordinary circumstances leading up to his actions, and Roy received a reduced sentence. He accepted his fate with quiet resignation, as though he had already paid for his crimes in the currency of heartbreak and betrayal. Laura, now alone, became the subject of whispers and stares. She lived like a ghost, drifting through the days in a fog of regret. She had sought escape and adventure, hoping to break free from the monotony of her life, only to find herself bound by memories of love and loss, guilt and shame. She stayed in Hawthorne Springs, unwilling to leave the ruins of the life she had destroyed, as if punishing herself for all the choices that had led her here. Years passed, and the town eventually moved on. Roy served his sentence, and upon his release, chose not to return to Hawthorne Springs. He left quietly, a man stripped of everything he once held dear, leaving the town to its quiet life, as it had been before. But some scars remained, etched into the memories of those who had witnessed the tragic unraveling of love, loyalty, and trust. And Laura, left behind, spent her days in a house that no longer felt like home, haunted by the choices that had shattered not only her life but the lives of everyone she had once loved. 